I'm starting a co-op. I'm excited to share and have you join me in this journey of starting a worker-owned cooperative. If you're like me and been thinking about starting a co-op for a while, hopefully this video and the series of videos will be helpful and answer questions and concerns and you can see the ups and downs of starting a co-op. And stick around till the end because uh, I share a little bit about how the first couple meetings have gone. So hopefully the, that'll be helpful too. Hey guys, it's Vivek from Mindtome once again. Uh, excited to be back to do another video. Uh, this time, a very personal one on starting a worker owned cooperative. Uh, I've been thinking about a worker owned co op for a while now, started in around May 2020 almost a year ago now. And um, at first it wasn't a worker-owned co-op, it was just a traditional business idea. Um, but as I started doing more and more research, I uh, discovered the concept of worker-owned cooperatives and fell in love with it. So I think to you know make it more clear how I got to the concept of worker-owned cooperatives, um, I need to go back to the beginning. So for me, it started off with this idea of thinking about Jeff Bezos' worth. At the time, he was worth like $115, $120 billion. And I was like, oh man, that's like a ton of money. And just what would happen to the world if all that money went to charities? And it was just, a, just an idea. I was just thinking about it and I was playing around with a few things. And I thought I actually had a solution to maybe addressing that. Like, you know, having a, a business that sold stuff and then most of the profits would go to charities. Um, and I, I really started thinking into that ecosystem and seeing what was possible, what was impossible. I even did a, a blog piece, a really in-depth analysis of the company Newman's Own, who's basically been doing that model for almost 40 years now. So um, as I was doing more and more research, I stumbled onto the concept of worker-owned co-ops. I'm not quite certain where I fell into the whole work cooperative uh, learning process, but it was probably somewhere between um, learning from Professor Richard Wolf some TED Talks, uh, a friend of mine, Olivia, who's sharing a lot about worker-owned co-ops, and a few other sources. And I started realizing so many major benefits of worker co-ops uh, that it got me so excited. Stuff like uh, more democratic workplaces, uh, more equal pay, uh, product focus over financial focus. And when I started seeing all these pieces, I was amazed and ex incredibly excited. While Worker-owned co-ops are definitely different than my original idea of having a business that sold some things and most of the profits going to charities. I felt actually a worker-owned cooperative in some ways was more powerful than that idea. Um, for a couple of reasons. A, you know, the focus on the workers. Uh, in today's world, there's such a huge divide between the rich and the middle class or middle class and poor and the, and the rich. And so, very directly, worker owned cooperatives addresses that issue. Additionally, what's very powerful is there's an entire ecosystem of organizations across the globe, both in the US and outside the US, that have been doing worker owned cooperatives for uh, hundreds of years. So, it, versus this idea of sell, like having a business that sold some stuff and then use the profits to help charities, that, while well, there's a couple examples of that, it's a very new, innovative sort of concept that not too many people have explored and if they have, they haven't been very successful at it. So while there's definitely a lot of co-ops in the US and abroad, finding clear information on how to start a worker co-op was definitely challenging. Um, I had to dig through lots of different sites and uh, watch different videos. There was some high level material but not really detailed steps how to do it. Um, and so for me, this was a real challenging point. If you want to start find information on a, how to start a traditional startup, there's so many blog pieces, so many um, influencers, so much uh, uh, videos on that concept. But for worker owned cooperatives, it's really hard to find um, sources that you can count on and are clear to be able to share exactly the process of starting a worker owned cooperative and, and how to be successful at it. But slowly but surely, I was able to start putting, piecing together some information. Uh, as cooperatives stand for being cooperative, I was able to also talk to uh, different founders and entrepreneurs across the globe. There's different organization nonprofits that support the education and teaching people how to start worker on cooperatives. And slowly I started getting a better idea how to start one. Um, and in that process, I realized that there was really three main challenges to starting a worker on cooperative. 
The first challenge is trying to get people to come together around an idea uh, or around a problem to solve. So that was the first major hurdle. Second one was governance and trying to lead an organization that was democratic, but not bureaucratic. And lastly, a worker-owned cooperative, um, as you may know, cannot get money from traditional investors. Uh, otherwise, they'd be owned by investors, not by the workers. So, uh, so in that situation, you have to figure out a different way to raise money. And that has uh, been a challenging process to figure out how to do that. So after a bunch of months of research and putting different pieces together and talking to numerous people, I had a very strong idea of how to start a worker on co-op. I had a much stronger idea how to deal with those hurdles that I mentioned. And so me and a few friends got together and we put together a little event page focusing on the problem that we wanted to address, which is uh, creating a online store and a physical store that sells products that are made sustainably. And uh, with a little luck and a lot of effort, we got over 90 people to RSVP to our event. We had a really strong turnout for the first event. Uh, over 40 people showed up to it, uh, and we've had really solid response since then. In retrospect, there was a lot of things I, I learned about this process. Um, first off, institute.coop uh, online is a great resource for information on how to start one. Uh, they have a PDF, I'll, I'll link that in the description below, of actually literally how to start a co-op. Uh, additionally, I reached out to uh, nonprofit organizations in my city, which is New York, but there's ones all over the country. I even reached out to one in the Northwest, I think. Uh, it was just a phone number I found and I reached out to them and they were, and they were very helpful. I also contacted a bunch of um, entrepreneurs, um, both in the US and beyond, uh, who started working on co-ops and got their feedback. And, and people were so helpful across the board, always willing to spend some time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour or more, uh, give me input on how to start a work around co-op. Because there's not as much you know, blog content and video content out there um, for entrepreneurs interested in starting work around co-ops, I definitely recommend spending a little bit of time doing that type of research, doing that type of reading uh, to get yourself knowledgeable how to start one. And hopefully videos like this one will be helpful in your process of learning how to start one. But once you sort of get the process down, you know, just go out there and try to organize your own worker one cooperative, whether it's creating an event that people randomly attend, whether it's something local and you try to get people to come to a local event, um, you know, just go out there and try to start one. Don't, don't feel too nervous. Um, you know, obviously I have been making mistakes and having challenges trying to balance, um, you know, being democratic with also having a vision that I believe in. And so, um, we've had, We've had two meetings. We're about to have our third one later tonight. Um, hopefully we'll have a strong attendance to this one uh, where people are interested in, in sharing their opinion. But thus far, the meetings have been very um, engaging and people have been excited and sharing their feedback along the way. So, you know, that's it for now. I definitely uh, will share my link to our worker Own cooperative uh, event page that might be helpful to you. And I, once again, would encourage you to try to Learn the process as best as you can. I'll provide all the great resources that I found. I encourage you to contact uh, local worker-owned cooperative support uh, organizations in your city. They're a very useful resource and oftentimes are paid by taxpayers. So you have that as a free resource for yourself. Um, and, um, and, and just know that while this can be a challenging to get it off the ground, um, if you can assemble the right type of people, enough people, Hopefully in time, a lot of the work will fall off your shoulders and onto other people as a, any worker cooperative should. So that's it, guys. Um, this is just the beginning of the journey. We're only about to start meeting number three in a couple hours. So if uh, working on cooperatives uh, are of interest to you, definitely stick around, check out the channel, subscribe to it. Um, also, if this was helpful or not helpful, please leave a comment below. But if it was, definitely um, please give us a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Thanks so much, have a great day.